In this video we'll cover the use of union instruction in selection queries. We have two tables, very similar to each other in structure. The first one, cities, contains a list of cities with ID as primary key, the name of the city and an int representing the average population. The second one, countries, has an int as primary key and two varchars being the first the country name and the second the field for notes on the selected country. There are cases in which, for a reason or another, we may want to retrieve a single record set formed by the contents of the two tables. That means we don't want to execute two separate selects, managing two record sets, but we desire to have the whole result in a unique set of rows. Union instruction jumps aboard in cases like that. And beware, Union and join are two separate things, although they both can be records. Let's see how it works. In this query, I had executed the first select on cities table, then I had inserted union all, and finally a select on countries table. For a union to work successfully, every select must have the exact number of requested fields, paying attention to data type which must be compatible. We cannot request, for example, the second parameter of the first select to be put population field, which is an int, while the second parameter of the last query is description, for it is a varchar. Looking closely, it can be noted that there are two records containing one Houston. That's because I introduced an error in country's table, inserting in the first row the name of a city. This error produces a duplicate between tables, which can be handled by a select instinct, because there are no duplicates in the single tables. In cases like that, union all can become simply union. Basically, removing the all parameter means that we want to execute a cross-table instinct to get rid of multiple occurrences of the same record.